Hello, third grade scientists. Mr. Glover's here to talk about organism survival. That's what we've been looking at. Last week, you did an activity where you watched a video about the penguins and how the penguins survive in that cold Antarctic habitat by being in a group. And so today is the assessment part of animal groups. And so basically, you're kind of thinking about all of the things that you learned about the different animal groups. Now, you may need to do a little bit of research or go back and look at some things because you did have the packet on the animal groups that I sent a long time ago. But you guys know a whole lot about animals and there are many resources on the web where you can find out about those animals. Even just doing a Google search might help you answer some of those questions that you're going to encounter on today's assignment. And so I'm going to take you through an example with an animal I know about, but one that we didn't take a look at. But first, I'm going to show you something. The first thing you need to do, and I'm going to ask my camera, person, which is my daughter Sophia today, right here. Your first question on your assignment, you are going to have to just circle the animal that lives in groups that you're choosing to answer all of your questions. So you have the choice and you're only going to circle one of these animals, elephant, penguin, Canada goose, orca, lion, zebra, and wolf. All of those animals lived in or live in groups, and by living in groups, that helps them to survive. So you just pick one of those seven, and that's what you're going to focus on for all the rest of the questions on this assignment, okay? So, take a look here. I went over here, animals that live in groups. This was question one. I selected the honeybees. And I selected the honeybees because that's one of the animals we didn't discuss or look at. But they're one of the animals that, by living together in groups, they help each other. And so that's what we're thinking about with organism survival is how these animals live together. So question two is you have to circle the habitats where the organism lives. And so to circle the habitats. You're going to circle all the habitats where those organisms live. So you might circle some of them. Maybe you might only circle one. Some of them you may have to circle four or five. So with the honeybees, I'm going to think about this and I look at it and I go, well, honeybees, I know for sure they live in the forest because they live around here and we have forest habitat. Um, so you want to zoom in a bit. So forest. Also, I'm thinking about it and I go, yeah, they could they survive in the desert? Probably. There's some plants in the desert. They'd probably find a way. I don't know if it's exactly the honeybees around here, but there could be some variety. Then I come over to this side. They aren't going to survive in fresh water. They aren't made to live in water, so I'm not going to do that. Grasslands, definitely. Mountains, for sure. They might not be all the way up on the tip top, but the sides, yeah. Ocean, no. And so we're looking at those pieces. So you're going to identify the habitat they would survive in. Um, next, question three for you guys. Why does the organism live in a group? Well, when I think about honeybees, I think about them having specialized jobs within their swarm, their hive. And so, by living together, that's there's a lot of work that needs to be done. They have to feed everybody, and they have to have enough shelter for their whole hive. So by living together, it kind of breaks up the work. So what it does is everybody has a job to help the whole group survive. So why does this organism live in a group? This organism lives in a group to help 
the get enough food for all of the honeybees in the hive. Also, not only this, make sure when you answer this question, it's specific for your animal. You can't just reuse this question because your animals aren't going to live in a hive. But you need to think about how they all work together for that survival. And we've seen that with the different animal groups. In addition, I forgot about this and I just remembered it now. There are bees that guard the outside of the hive to, so intruders can't get in. Only the workers can come and go and bring the food and bring what they need to the hive. So, next. What behaviors help the organism to survive? Now, this is an interesting one because I'm thinking about honeybees. What behaviors help the organism to survive? One of the things I think about is everybody has a job. During the summertime, the hive gets extra hot because the sun is on the hive. And so, if it gets too hot and stuffy in the hive, all of them, like... Inside the hive is where all the babies are, the next generation. And so if all the babies die out and the queen dies out, they, they can't survive. So what behaviors help the organism to survive? One of the things that honeybees do is they have the guards on the outside of the hive. Yes, that helps them to survive. But there's also groups of bees that will actually just go to the edge of the hive and buzz their wings and beat their wings to help cool the hive so that it can help regulate temperature in the hive. So that's this is kind of a more complicated one. But if you remember back to the penguins last week, there was a behavior that helped those organisms to survive in that very cold habitat. So you can think about that. But I'm going to put this. The behavior that helps the honey bees to survive is that some bees will buzz the, their wings at the entrance to cool the hive on hot days. So you just kind of have to think about some of those. Now, so question one, two, three, four, over to five. Five is over here. Now I'm going to show you on yours. So if Sophia would come over here. Yours looks a little different because I had to change the format a bit, but you're only going to circle one. Circle the habitat where the organism would not thrive. Basically, where that organism would die. So when I come over here, and I only need to circle one. And so when I think about this, I'm like, where would it not thrive? Where would that happen? Well, I've got a couple I can pick from. The Antarctic and the Arctic. Think about those. And you probably know a reason there. And fresh water in ocean. I might have described those earlier. But I'm going to go with ocean for this one. Then, question six. You have to explain why you chose would not thrive. Well, now I'm going to answer, and I'm going to echo the question, but I'm going to put my animal name in. Honeybees would not thrive in the ocean. I can say ocean habitat or just ocean because, well... 
bees don't have the structures for swimming. They're made for flying, but they aren't made for swimming because bees do not have physical, this is a good science term, physical structures for swimming and breathing under water. And so, notice, look at that. I'm not just writing simple little sentences. We need to make sure that we are explaining. You have to act as, like, as though I'm not, as though I'm not knowledgeable. I don't know about all the different animals, all the different animal groups. And so that's how you have to answer these questions. You have to answer it like you're explaining it and teaching it to somebody else. So make sure, especially with those questions, um, I got to double check, three, four, and six, you've got those good explanations because that's going to show that deep understanding of those animals, animal groups, and survival. So just make sure you're explaining those answers thoroughly. All right? Now, once you've watched this video, Click on Add a Response in Seesaw and answer your questions. Make sure to pick one animal from the animal groups and focus on that animal. And if you need to, research that animal a little bit before you go into the assignment too. Just to kind of refresh and get your ideas. There are lots of resources out there. So kind of use those resources to help you a bit. But you, you, also, you guys also know quite a bit about animals. So just make sure you keep those facts straight. All right, scientists. I can't wait to uh, see your answers. And I got a special thing planned in the coming weeks. And so we just have to wait for some nice weather outside and see if we can make this happen. So, hey, see you soon. Bye.